slain soldiers laid to rest in a state funeral at Abuja Military Cemetery. Federal government declares Friday, Monday, public holidays for Easter celebration. Abuja community struggles with water shortages due to inadequate infrastructure. Away from Nigeria, son of Guinea-Bissau's ex-president jailed in United States for trafficking drugs to fund coup. Hello again and welcome to the news update on Trust Television. At this hour, I'm Aisha Salihu. Thank you so much for joining us and now the news in full. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tarid Lagbaja on Wednesday disclosed that 17 troops of the Nigerian Army who were killed in Delta State left 10 widows, among which are three pregnant women and as well as 21 children, speaking in an emotional laden voice where the slain military officers were being buried. Lagbaja revealed that the three women were four, five and eight months pregnant, respectively. While commiserating with the families of the gallant soldiers, Lagbaja assured them that the Nigerian army and the country will provide succor to them and preserve the memories of their departed loved ones. Meanwhile, President Bola Tinubu, who was the special guest of honor at the burial ceremony at the military cemetery, declared that the deceased, the deceased officers would be awarded posthumous national honors. Despite the equipment, training, and other forms of preparation, sometimes some may not make it back alive, while some may return handicapped and invalid. Ours is a profession that deals with matters of life and death. When soldiers die, in the hands of the enemies of the state, we take it as dying for what the nation has considered a just cause. We celebrate them as gallant heroes. Today, we gather here with heavy hearts and tear-filled eyes to bid farewell to our fallen heroes, the brave men of the armed forces of Nigeria, who made the ultimate sacrifice in defense of our nation. We stand here in honor of their courage, dedication, and unwavering commitment to duty. The officers and soldiers who lost their lives that day were patriots, brave, and noble men who gave their lives to defend and protect our nation against internal and external threats. Their sacrifice will be remembered and honored for generations to come. More on security matters. Troops of the Nigerian Army, in collaboration with hybrid forces, have neutralized some terrorists and recovered arms, ammunition, and rusted cattle in Bornu and Kasina states. The Nigerian army made this disclosure in a post on its official X handle on Wednesday. The post said the operations were carried out on unidentified Boko Haram and Islamic State of West Africa province enclaves within the Gori general area in Gwaza local government area of Borno State. The statement said the troops successfully neutralized one terrorist, rescued several cattle, and recovered two AK-47 rifles. 38 rounds of 7.62 mm special ammunition, AK-47 magazines, one improvised explosive device, and one motorcycle. In Kasana State, the army said an offensive on terrorist camps led to the killing of two of the criminals at Garin Rinji General Area in Batsari local government area. Meanwhile, 
President Bola Tinubu has urged the judiciary to be firm in its judgments against kidnappers and treat the individuals involved in such despicable acts as terrorists. The president spoke on Tuesday at an iftar dinner with members of the judicial arm of government, led by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Olukayode Ariwola. He described kidnapping as a reprehensible act which must be met with a strong resolve. Kendi Amodu reports. President Tinumbu has continued to meet with members of different arms of government in the course of the Ramadan fast. This time around, he's meeting with a delegation from the judiciary, made up of seven retired officers, including two former chief justices of Nigeria, Justices Mahmoud Muhammad and Walter Onogen. He has chosen to pass a strong message on this occasion. Let's take very strong action against the people. They become cowardly. They have been degraded. They look for soft targets. They go to backyard of, uh, you know, uh, local tools, and kidnap children and create disaffection. We must treat them equally as terrorists. The president also shares insights into what motivated the review of salaries of judicial officers by his administration. We can really have to see it from compensatory, fair angle that we be beneficial. And you can't say you uh, fighting corruption and not put teeth into the spine. It's not the proper way to go. Both the Chief Justice of Nigeria and the Attorney General of the Federation are acknowledging the President's efforts to improve the welfare of judicial officers in the country. For the first time, the administration now has the full complement of the Supreme Court. We are 21 justices now. It has never happened. Your Excellency approved all of them and you made payment for so many things for them. They are getting more and more comfortable. The salaries and the monuments of justice of various courts have been come out of for quite some time, since 19, uh, 2007. It takes a man with great heart, determination, and consideration to do what you have just done. More than 300, 300.2% increase has been given to the judges. The call on the judiciary for stronger action against kidnappers is a key thrust of the administration to reduce insecurity across the country. But beyond that, the response of the judiciary on this occasion reflects the efforts of the Tunumbu administration to maintain harmony between the three arms of government. From State House Abuja, Kain Amudu, Trust TV News. The federal government has declared Friday, March 29, and Monday, April 1, 2024, as public holidays to mark the celebrations of 2024 Good Friday and Easter Monday. The Minister of Interior, Olubumi Tunji Ojo, made, the, made this known on behalf of the federal government in a statement signed by the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, Aishetu Ndayako, on Wednesday. According to the Minister, Easter, beyond religious significance, promotes values of love, forgiveness and compassion, which are essential for social cohesion and harmony. He called on Christians to imbibe these virtues as they are capable of impacting positively on the socio-economic development in Nigeria by fostering unity reducing conflicts and encouraging cooperation among Nigerians. He further urged Nigerians to show acts of charity and generosity to help alleviate the material conditions of the less privileged amongst them. While wishing Christians at home and abroad a happy and blissful Easter celebration, the minister also called on Nigerians 
to join hands with President Bola Tinubu led administration in its determination to bring sustainable development and usher in prosperity to all. The Kano State Governor, Abba Yusuf, has subsidized fares for intended pilgrims who will perform this year's Hajj under the umbrella of the Kano State Pilgrims Welfare Board. The Director General of the Board, Lamin Dan Bafa, made the disclosure while briefing newsmen on Wednesday. He said the Kano State Government took the decision due to the Due to the recent increase of the Hajj fares by the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria following the instability of the forex exchange rate, Dan Bafa urged all intended pilgrims to ensure that they pay the balance before March 28, 2024, as directed by Nahakon. The Director General maintained that those to benefit from the Hajj subsidy are those who have already paid part payment to the board saying over 2,900 intended pilgrims have already made their part payment with the board. Recall that early this week, Nahakon announced the increase of Hajj fares by an additional 1.9 million naira, bringing, to, bringing the total fares to 6.6 .6 million naira. Meanwhile, fresh intended pilgrims are required to pay 8.2 million naira as a full Hajj fare for this year, as required by Nahakon. Flights were grounded at the Port Hackett International Airport following a protest by some women from the Ipo community in Ikwere local government area of River State. The protesters, all dressed in black, blocked the airport roundabout gate, which leads into the complex brandishing placards, descriptions such as, What is our fence? Over seven years of no Nepal light, no single access to mobile network, no good access roads within Ipo community, among others. The situation disrupted flights within the airport for about two to three hours. A source inside the airport revealed that while arrivals weren't affected, flights could not depart because the passengers were prevented from getting into the airport itself. The disruption lasted till about 8 a.m., after which the gates were opened. Amid the noise and commotion, the chairman of the River State Council of Traditional Rulers, Sergeant Awuse, addressed the women and promised them that he would personally come with the airport management team to see to the improvement and development of their community. And now to the southwestern part of the country. Amidst the economic hardship in the country, the Lagos state government has demolished houses in Otto Lagos mainland community in Abuta Meta West, leaving residents of the community homeless. This has worsened their plight, as many are not just struggling for food, but shelter as well. The report. The pathetic situation of residents of Otto Lagos mainland community following the demolition has sparked outrage and left many without shelter. As a result, Many now sleep outside as their boats have been demolished. Even though the demolition will come in a community, it should have been a negotiation with the people in the community. It's not bad if the, uh, the kings and the Lagos state have meeting with the people in the community. If they want to uh, 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 chase people out of community, they should not chase them as an animal. We have a government of the people by the people but the government we have these days are the government of the people that are using power on the people that judgment is there for everyone to see that at least both parties should go and meet and see how we can that is just the judgment and now nobody's talking about the judgment and this friday last friday you just see the uh, labaka that is a uh, uh, labka they start demolishing set uh, property at least. The resident asked the government to come to their aid by providing shelter for them. The houses outside, they are not affordable for us. We can't afford them. A lot of us are sleeping outside the main road, outside, even as we are like this. All our properties are lost and everything. We are outside inside the rain. As I am, I'm a single mom of two. 
I'm trying to live my life, a standard life at least. I don't want the community where I came out from to determine my future. I'm managing myself to even run the part-time part program in Last Potec. Now all my everything are being chartered. As a last final year student now, I don't even know. I'm, I don't even, I don't have any hope if I'm going to finish, if I'm going to even sign out this year with this that is going on. I don't have any hope anywhere because I've not paid my school fees. I've not done anything. The only hope I have is here. And now the hope is being chartered. They just came all of a sudden one afternoon unannounced. We are begging, we are praying, we are begging them. They should please and uh, please. We need adequate house. If the development is coming up, we should be included in it. Make them recognize us and make them do better for all, both the tenants, both the landlord, both everybody. But we are so far. We are so far. Make them recognize us. See, the rain for yesterday. We are inside the rain. Ah! It's all right. yeah, no, no. They also called for compensation to enable them look for alternative accommodations. You're watching the news update on Trust Television coming up shortly. Abuja communities struggles with water shortages due to inadequate infrastructure. We'll bring you insight on details of this story and more after the break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us on the news update on Trust Television. Let's take a look at our top stories again. We told you that slain soldiers laid to rest in a state funeral at Abuja Military Cemetery. Plus, federal government declares Friday, Monday, public holidays for Easter celebration. Moving on to more stories and now to matters of politics. Despite the opposition of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Julius Abure, has been re-elected as the national chairman of Labour Party for a second term by a unanimous affirmation of delegates. The chairman of the National Convention and Deputy Governor of Abia State, Ikechuku Emetu, declared him the winner during the party's national convention on Wednesday in Newi, Anambra State. Abure has been having a running battle with the NLC leadership led by Joe Ajero earlier. The NLC called for Abure's resignation as party chairman and the immediate constitution of a caretaker transition committee to organize a legitimate and all-inclusive national convention for the party. Residents of Imo State, especially those living along the poly nekede ihiagwa axis of Oweri, have expressed displeasure over the indiscriminate dumping of refuse at a site in their community. This followed the overflow of refuse at the site, which many say should no longer serve as a refuse dumping site. Trustee Visa Jiba de Praise was at the site and filed in this report. A visit to the dump site revealed a huge heap of refuse with both fresh and decayed trash dumped indiscriminately, confirming the claim of the residents that the site poses severe danger to their lives. While residents call for an immediate intervention by waste management agencies, this civil and social activist is calling for the outright stoppage of dumping of refuse at the site. Uh, really, I'm not happy about the refuse because it's affecting us in many areas. Even uh, we lose customers because of it, because of the smells, you understand? So, we're not happy about it. Uh, road is about 7.5 kilometers, 7.5 meters wide. Presently now it's operating at 3.5 meters wide, which is half of the uh, width, road width. The road is also a very uh, busy area where heavy trucks like 700 tons vehicles fly. Today they struggle and miss lots of accidents because of uh, overflowing refuse. We it does mean that uh, it's really affecting people living around this area. Even the people doing business, like here in my shop, I mean, it, people find it difficult to park their car around. In the kind of uh, the, the order that we are perceiving from the dustbin is so terrible. They maintained that since the place with which used to be a gully site is now filled and the land reclaimed, there is need to disease from further dumping of refuse at the site. We have to end the dump site and get a new dump site where refuse uh, could be built. I want to commend the effort of His Excellency, 
the governor of Imo State to have appointed immediately an interim, interim committee that uh, is overseeing refuse disposal in Imo State currently. So, but I want to charge them to do their job efficiently. I want to charge them to look at various areas and commit action uh, to re removing some of those uh, refuse sites that are littered here and there. The government should uh, remove this has been here and bring it and uh, take it to another place. But it's really affecting people staying here. If you, if I want you to remove the dustbin so that they will use it and build the supermarket, any free station and organization that will help us so that we have a good health here. Though the maintenance has lingered for a while now, with refuse almost claiming the ever-busy poly nakedi Iagua Road, the people are hopeful that their call will reach the appropriate quarters and a solution will come in a matter of days. Ajibade praise, Trust TV News, Oweri. The World Bank reports that 60 million Nigerians lack basic drinking water, with water scarcity hitting Abuja the nation's capital particularly hard. In rural communities, children often must choose between fetching water and attending school. Trustivers Ibrahim Ismail in this report takes a look at how the scarcity affects their education, health and future. Take a look. 16-year-old Samson Shasu, a JSS2 student with dreams of studying electrical engineering, faces significant challenges due to water scarcity in his community of Gumbo, Abuja. He often misses early morning lessons because he has to travel a long distance to fetch water to support his family. This dilemma highlights the harsh reality that many students like Samson endure where necessities conflict with educational aspirations. Efforts to alleviate water scarcity in such areas are crucial to ensure that students like Samson can pursue their education without undue hardship. To fetch water like 10 buckets, and before I'm done with the fetching, before I went to school, I'll be late. So it, it took so long time to finish the domestic course so so and um, before i read the school people is already in the class so i miss some lessons so if i'm late the teacher will beat me and give me some punishments the parents of 16 year old samson are deeply concerned about the impact of water scarcity on their child's education the constant struggle to secure enough water for their large family is exhausting and threatens to disrupt Samson's schooling. This situation highlights the urgent need for solutions to alleviate water scarcity in their community, ensuring that families can access the resources they need without compromising their children's education and future prospects. In my house, I have two wife, and I have almost... 10 children here with me. Then we consume uh, like six drums in a day. At times they used to come and complain, and there is nothing I alone can do. Although Gumbo is said to have a large population of over 1,000 people, it has only 400 pump boreholes which are inadequate to meet the needs of the community. When the boreholes are faulty, this pond becomes the last resort for the community. They come of FCT entirely. In fact, they don't a lot, but still, it is not enough. Why? Simple because if you see this area now, we are battling with only single borehole, on which if we have up to three or four, only to this uh, side, it's not bad. Samson Shasu, driven by his ambition to become an electrical engineer, remains hopeful that authorities will take action to resolve the water scarcity in his village. His wish is for an end to the daily struggle of fetching water, which currently forces him to sacrifice valuable learning time. Samson's determination exposes the critical need for addressing water scarcity in communities like his, ensuring that young minds can focus on their education and pursue their dreams without unnecessary obstacles. Women need to leave their homes and children to be here. And indeed, it is affecting the progress of children's education 
as it relates to the issue of 16-year-old Samson Shasu who needs to be here to fetch some water before he gets time to go to school and it is challenging. Their hope is that the authorities concerned will come to their aid. Ibrahim Ismail, Trust TV News, Abuja. Trust TV's Ibrahim Ismail there bringing us a community report. Now away from Nigeria. The son of Guinea-Bissau's ex-president has been sentenced to over six years in prison by a United States court for leading an international heroin trafficking ring. Marlon Bakai Sanha Jr., 52, plans to use the proceeds to fund his ambitions to become Guinea-Bissau's president through a coup. Authorities say he is the son of Marlon Bakai Sanha, who led the West African country from 2009 until his death in 2012. Sanha Jr. has been linked to a failed coup in February 2022. He was extradited to the United States in August 2022 following his arrest in Tanzania a few weeks earlier. His trial began soon afterwards and in September last year, he pleaded guilty to conspiring to illegally import drugs. Sanha Jr. is accused of importing heroin from several countries to Portugal and also from Europe to the United States. U.S. authorities say he could be deported following his imprisonment as he is not an American citizen. And with that, we've come to the end of the news update at this hour. Remember, you can always follow us across all of our social media platforms and also join our YouTube live stream for more news, programs and documentary. Thank you so much for your time on the news update on Trust Television. I'm Aisha Salihu. I'll see you again.